injuries for this week. Armstead will be out. McCaffrey out. Ross Dwelly out. <clears throat> Ambry Thomas out. Kip will be out. Jair is out. Feliciano's questionable. Juwan Jennings questionable. Ray Ray and Danny are questionable. Go ahead. Yes. In uh, which category? Out. How, how, did, how is Ray Ray coming along, and where do you make the decision on when to bring him up? Um, it's a technicality, but we've already made the decision. He'll be up. Yeah. You have to make a corresponding move? Yes. Up. Has that been done? Um, we haven't told the person yet, so. What about um, Jason Barrett? Is, is Sunday an opportunity to get him some? Yeah, it was. Uh, he was going to play a lot um, yesterday, laying on his shoulder, and he has to get rotator cuff surgery. So, yeah, it was, um, I mean, we all know any towards ACL in Detroit week one on that turf. Took about a year and a half to get back from it, and um, got his Achilles just on air last year on the field, and he was practicing his butt off all week. We were going to play him a lot in this game. He's been awesome here this last month, and he jumped up for a ball and just came down on his shoulder in an awkward position. So it was, um, and it happens to a lot of guys. So it was just a, a, you know, it's crushing for him, but it's also it's a shoulder injury. It wasn't like a knee or a leg, but you do have to get surgery for that stuff. So um, he found that out this morning. Was there an indication when he went down that it was potentially serious? Or yeah, because it looked it looked like it was. So we all just held our breath and hope. But he popped up so fast because he was hoping it won in and kind of moved his arm and. And then he just kept practicing and going, and so we just assumed that, all right, maybe it's it just hurt him a little bit, but it's not too bad of an injury. He looked great in practice, but he was holding his arm a little bit, and, and we said we might need to go get an MRI. He was hoping not to, so he's like, no, I think I'm good, and he slept on it, came in this morning, and it was still hurting, so we got the MRI and showed he had a tear and needed surgery, so. What kind of um, recovery time is that? Um, I think they usually say, I think they, Branch is going to hold me to everything, but I think they usually say six months, but I think it's usually like four or five, so. No, I mean, I, I talked, I mean, we were the, we let him know, right, and so we talked to him right when it happened, so. I mean, he handles it like he does everything, I'm very, like a man, and, but I mean, I know, I know how it is. He's going to be pretty down for a little bit, and I uh, hope he hangs around here, because we all love him around here, I think that could help him, and um, this will pass, like the, like it always does, and. He had a long road to get back to this point, and I just told him I can't believe how good he's looked. Didn't think it would ever be possible to come back from what he has, which all the knees and the Achilles and everything, and, and he did. And he looked great in Houston. He looked great here. Um, it was a perfect opportunity for him to play this week just so he could play a lot and see how he was going into the playoffs. And he got a random shoulder injury. And I just tried to put in perspective for him. It's not like you got your knee again. It's not like you got your Achilles or anything. That's something you can't come back from. But I don't think that's stuff on his mind right now. Have you made a final decision about whether Trent Williams will play in this game? Uh, yeah, he's playing. Yeah. It, it seems like you have your inactives already set. Yeah. By that. Okay. Yeah, we got yeah we got um, seven guys that Brock's the only one that could play, who isn't, and he can be up in an emergency. But those are seven guys. Um, got two guys up off practice squad, and um, it's, it is going to be a challenge with some of those guys. It's not like I, I want Trent and a number of people out there for a while, um, so we got to balance it out right. But those guys got to get their minds right, ready to play. Has John Jennings cleared through protocol? And Who's now, that? Has John Jennings cleared through protocol? And now it's just a decision. No, he's got another step. Yeah. Jalen Moore has. That's yes, Jalen Moore has. Uh, one more. Well, at least one more. No, go ahead. Um, your practice squad, um, 16 guys, a lot of veteran guys. I know, she, you know you always reward them on a Friday, but what do you just see from the level of commitment of how those guys practice? And, and even going back a couple of weeks ago to Curtis Robinson, who could have left but decided to stay here. Well, what does that mean to you, and how much do they kind of share in the successes of the team? So much. Um, I hate even the title of practice squad because um, it's it sounds like you're just like a walk on or something, and it couldn't be any more the opposite. Um, I mean, practice squads have that title because they're not in the 53 man roster, and we get two up, and we have to cut someone and not do that. But um, there's a part of this team is anyone. That's why they travel with us. That's why they're on the field. That's why they do everything. Um, 
we just we only can get two of them up on game day. But that's what if you don't have the right people on practice squad, it's really tough to be successful throughout the year. Um, you need people on practice squad to develop them because there's nowhere else to develop people. Um, but you also need people on practice squad are ready to play because in this league there there's very rarely threes and people get injured a lot and um, you put some practice you put some guys you're just trying to develop in these situations and that's too much to put on those guys so being able to mix out with vets and rookies it's um, those are guys are a huge part of our team you have a guy like Robinson who has a chance do you try to convince him or is that just you know, that's on, on you pal no you always want to convince guys to stay but you also you, you got to be able to, for me to sell anything, it's got to be right. Um, that's why I would probably be horrible at recruiting unless it was a great situation. I think I'd be good at it. Um, but no, those guys, I mean, it depends what these guys' goals are. I mean, sometimes you got to get in a cured season for insurance purposes and stuff like that, which you got to be on the 53, so that's a big deal. Um, but it's also, it's, you try to talk to young guys, it's just, if that's your only goal, I mean, that's, that's not a great goal. Like your, your goal should be to make it in this league. And so you want to be places where you can kind of hide a little bit till you're ready if, if that's going to happen. So that's sometimes what I sell to people. Um, and then when you hear him, mean, I just read Curtis's quote. I didn't know about that. I never had to talk to Curtis because he decided that on his own. Like I didn't, we didn't talk to him at all. Um, and for a guy like that, I mean, it shows he's been around here for a little bit. He's been awesome for us. He's been on our team before, which he's always on our team, but he's been on the 53 too. And for him to say that quote that he did, just the reasons he wants to stay, that uh, stuff we say a lot on this team right now, <clears throat> everybody has, everyone cares about themselves and their family. I mean, you always put that first, usually, unless you're really abnormal. You got Pro Bowls and all that stuff coming out. But like when you're going runs like this and you're in these type of situations, it's just so much more about everybody else than one person. And when you have guys like Curtis who feel that way, who aren't exactly on the 53, it just shows you that he's a, awesome dude and um, for him to recognize the group he's around is real cool too. You decided on, on Colton McKivitz to be a right tackle without pursuing a free agent. Um, as you know the three sack first game everybody talked about but he wanted to play more snaps than anybody on your team but is he what you expected more than what you expected? How would you assess him? Um, I mean, he's what we expected. I mean he's played like a really good right tackle and if we didn't think he was going to be a really good right tackle we would have <laughs> gone and tried to get someone we thought would be a really good right tackle. Um, he's really earned our trust here. When he got a play last year, when Mike was down, we thought he played at a very high level. Um, and when you get to see guys do that in practice and then carry it over to the field, it doesn't make the guests work that hard. And that's how it was with Brock Purdy the year before. I mean, there's nothing you need to see. You saw it all. Like, are they made of the right stuff? Can they continue to do it? And um, that stuff's huge. I know that first game, I mean, you get sacks and that's going to be what jumps out, but I mean, half of those were my fault. I mean, can't call some of those passes and put him on TJ Watt at that time in the game, but Colton will never say that. Colton battles and, you know, worry about any of that stuff. And I think he's become one of the more confident players on our team. And I think it sh shows over in the games. Thank you, Kyle. All right. Thanks, guys.